Welcome to Win the Future, a podcast where we chat with folks who are tackling the most significant challenges our communities face today to make for a better tomorrow. I'm your host, Brett Broster. This is episode number 21. Hello and welcome to another episode of Win the Future. I'm your host, Brett Broster, and today we have a very special guest and a good friend, Julie Nash, who is the Economic Development Director of the great city of Milford, Connecticut. And Julie, welcome. Thank you for having me, Brad. I'm happy yeah. to sit with you again. It's always a pleasure. Yeah, second second podcast. I know. I, this time I'm feeling I'm feeling even better. Oh, and you crushed the last one. So this will be great. <laughs> so Julie, economic development uh, in the midst of COVID. Can you talk a little bit about kind of what your role entails and what kind of trends you're seeing? That's a loaded question because, wow, this year has been incredible. Um, so I, I'll start right from the beginning. You know, a year ago, pretty much from today, uh, sitting in a room with all our department heads, scratching our heads, saying, wow, what are we going to do next? Um, luckily, we already had a department um, roundtable that we do every month. So when the news hit that we were closing down, we all really just had to say to ourselves, you know, public works had to look and say, okay, we need to set up the offices for people to be six feet apart. Health department, of course, had the um, testing sites and making sure that the employees and the residents were safe. From my standpoint, it was, where's the funding coming? Who needs to close? And the rules were just coming so fast and fierce, which I'm sure you know. Um, In those first few months, it was minute to minute, hour to hour. Uh, the rules were changing for who was open and who was not open and just making sure that your own family was safe too. So it was, it was a hectic time. I think my role certainly in that was um, following the Small Business Administration, the Department of Economic and Community Development. Commissioner Lehman has been amazing um, to keep us up to date on what's happening and, and really, I mean, he'll pick up a call and answer an email in two seconds. So to be able to really be the liaison of information, I thought really was my role. Okay, this is what's happening. This is where you need to be. This is where the funding's coming. This is who you go to for the funding um, and fielding calls from people who quite frankly were just terrified. I mean, I had a lot of calls with people just crying saying, I'm gonna lose my business. I don't know what to do. Um, And just really helping them stay on their feet. So we've had some unbelievable success stories in the year. Uh, some of our downtown retailers said it's been their best year in four or five years, which is incredible. But the businesses that survived and were successful were the ones who just pivoted and said, okay, if my bricks and mortar is closed, what do I do? And they started Facebook live events, um, you know, where you could just shop right from Facebook. You could shop from Twitter. You could shop from all these places. So the businesses that did that and just quickly pivoted, Uh, which a lot of them did, I have been really successful over the past year. So uh, we also started a reopen Milford organization uh, with industry leaders across sectors, manufacturing, we had the chamber of commerce, retail, and we met weekly, monthly during the height of everything, just to see where the industries were and how they were faring and how we can help them through. And that was really invaluable in that time to make sure that we were on top of what each sector needed and how we can assist them. That's great. Obviously there's the business piece and then there's kind of the overall real estate market. And obviously Connecticut, Fairfield County into New Haven County has been booming with folks from New York moving out. Can you talk a little bit about that? It's been another another incredible, so I keep saying there's all these silver linings, right? Of COVID, there's the terrible tragedy. And then there's this terrible pivoting that the businesses and real estate markets and whatnot have been able to, um, experience. So in Milford specifically, there's certainly been an influx of residents coming from New York. There's been an influx of residents coming from New York, very much so up into the Fairfield County line and spilling over into Milford, where we have this incredible shoreline, uh, very uh, reasonable housing market here, which is just skyrocketed under COVID, just like it has you know across the nation. People aren't moving. So I thought an interesting one of our economic development commissioners is a real estate agent. And just to give you an idea, in March of 2019, there was 400, 500, 600 uh, uh, homes at any given time on the market. And now there's 60. 
So, I mean, you're seeing, you know, the supply and demand that here it is right now in the housing market that we're seeing, but it will correct itself like it as a, before. Uh, it'll be interesting though, because of, you know, just to look at real estate from the other side, the housing moratorium where folks aren't required to pay rent right now. Uh, I'm nervous about what, what comes from that at the end and, and how people are going to be able to catch up and how that's going to affect this incredible market and really balance it out a little bit. I hope that when we do have that moratorium, that there's um, some, some safe funding in place to keep people in their homes, but that's coming too, uh, probably in the next six months or so. So that will certainly have an effect on where the market is now as well. In addition to kind of just the overall real estate market booming, there's still transit oriented development, which probably will be even more important with folks moving out of New York and at some point probably going back to offices. But can you talk a little bit about what's going on in Milford with transit oriented development? Sure. So transit Oriented Development, TOD, is, um, for those that don't know, is about uh, a half mile radius, mile radius around your transit oriented area, bus station, rail, harbor, um, and that's what we call the transit um, oriented area. So we're lucky in Milford to have our downtown, uh, have the Metro North runs right to pick up and drop off right there. Right across the street is our harbor. Uh, we've had uh, an influx of new housing. We're supposed to break down, um, uh, break ground probably in the spring or summer with a, uh, a new development that is directly next to the train station. 12,000 square feet of retail, 50 apartments and an underground garage, which is great, um, about 175 um, spaces. So people that are visiting our downtown, that's one of the biggest complaints, right? That there's not enough parking. Although we have done a, a, a test and, and, and looked at the parking in downtown and there's plenty of parking, but there's that sight line perception. If you're not parking and you cannot see where you're going, then there's not enough. So hopefully this underground parking um, will allow for more folks to come and visit downtown, which will in turn help our business development. You know, one of the things when I'm recruiting businesses or talking to them about coming downtown, it's the parking issue becomes something. So having that there and that new TOD uh, development is gonna be really helpful uh, for the businesses that are here and the businesses that will come. And what's interesting about it is because transit oriented development has been such a hot topic in economic development for many, many years, uh, the state has put in uh, quite a bit of funding to help assess putting up some more of those developments around the area to attract people into town and be able to go carless and jump on your train and go to Stanford, go to New York and work. Then the pandemic hits and people start com stop commuting. So what becomes of these transit oriented districts? What becomes of the commute? What becomes of cars? What where our offices uh, are we living, you know, and breathing and working at home. So as we transition out of this pandemic, it's gonna be interesting to see how transit oriented development um, continues to grow. Listen, there's still transit oriented districts, regardless if, you know, how many people are using them. So there's still gonna be a place. It just, the places are gonna change. So we're gonna have to, look at that as we move forward and, and see how we utilize offices and transit. And um, I do think that the nine to five at a desk is dead. Uh, I think that's, we were already there and the pandemic just pushed us right over the edge. I mean, look at us right now, the digital accessibility is amazing. So why sit at a desk all day and, and, and you know, companies are kind of looking at that overhead and thinking, you know, we don't really need to spend that, you know, square footage funding on an office space when, you know, we can, pair down and have people come in a few days a week. So things are, things are going to be changing just at a very rapid pace, just like our digital uh, companies. And, you know, who knows what's going to happen next year with AI and, and all these interesting things that are coming our way. So I think we're at a, a pretty cool time to be alive. Uh, we've been to, able to experience some pretty interesting um, things in our lifetime. And I look forward to seeing what's coming next and kind of being on the forefront of making those policy decisions. That's great. Julie, we just need to take a quick break uh, for a couple of commercials here. Thanks, everybody. We'll be right back with Julie Nash, the Economic Development Director of Milford, Connecticut. 
Win the Future is sponsored in part by Connecticut by the Numbers. And we're back for the second part of an interview with our good friend, Julie Nash, who is the Economic Development Director in Milford, Connecticut. And Julie, before the break, we were talking a little bit about um, kind of what the future might bring for economic development. Do you want to talk a little bit about what kind of trends you think we might see in the coming years? Trends. Well, that's really, I think, a little bit kind of where we were talking before, what's going to happen uh, with office, what's going to happen with housing, what's going to happen um, with work from home and the balance of those things. Uh, I think retail um, will certainly continue on that experience path that we've been talking about. So with the Amazons in the world um, and the online shopping, how can retailers remain unique and um, viable? And I think that's, that's the way. They have to create an experience that people can feel when they go into their stores to purchase something. And, you know, you know, there's nothing like touching a sweater, right? That you can try on and, and kind of working those experiences with people. I've seen some of the uh, retailers have wine tastings with, you know, some local wineries or things like that, just to distinguish themselves from an Amazon or online shopping. So I think that will continue. And I think it's, it's fun for us too, right? To, to be shoppers. I'd love to go in and chat with my, you know, local uh, retailer and, and they show you kind of a, it's almost like a concierge sharp service, right? Well, you're going to love this and you're going to love that. The kind of things that you're really, that special touch that you're not going to get from the Amazons. And those are the ones I think will continue to survive. And then what about offices? So one of the conversations I said I was having before, I was talking to a colleague of mine in Fairfield County and they have a lot of developers coming to them requesting to turn office parks into housing. So does it make sense? Does it not make sense? What's a cyclical market? How long is that going to last? I don't know, right? We have to, one of those things we have to, to look at and see how it makes sense, but offices are now homes and homes are now offices. So it seems to, to be a good fit. Is there a market there? Uh, there seems to be. I think that people don't necessarily love to see new apartments come up. Uh, they like to see that ownership in, in, in town. So, um, but there is a market, right? You're not going to build something that people aren't going to buy. So that'll be interesting to see how the home and, and office uh, moves forward. I think the WeWorks of the world will continue because I don't know about you, but I know that when we were sent at home and had to work from home every day, uh, I thought that would have been a dream, you know, oh, I can, you know, be home every day. This is amazing. It wasn't the dream I thought it was going to be. And I am so happy that I have someplace to go. You know, like I said, I think the nine to five is dead. Uh, I cannot sit at my desk for nine to five anymore. It just doesn't make sense either with the access digitally. Um, but I need to have a place that I can go and focus. So I think that the WeWorks and those types of the district in New Haven, um, David Sleen has created, who is a Milford resident, actually, those will have a place. Um, I just don't know how they're going to look. So there's a lot of interesting things that happen and they were happening anyway, but the pandemic just threw them over the edge. Uh, one of the other interesting topics that I'm really um, getting into, we've gotten several calls recently from some uh, AI liaisons. So they said, you know, in the next five to 10 years, you are going to be walking down a street in your town and a, you know, Budweiser commercial can pop up because you're going to have your Google glasses on and, uh, you know, you have to be on top of that now because you don't want a Budweiser commercial to come up next to a school. Um, so I th think that's just super cool and interesting how that is going to work itself out. So AI, I think is going to have a much bigger role in our communities. And we really have to be at the forefront to see how we can uh, be ahead of that technology as well. On that note, how have conversations been at the state level or even at the municipal level on 
building the, the right regulatory structure or infrastructure for uh, AI to come in, uh, kind of to your, to your Google Glasses point. From, from at least from the city of Milford, it's just an initial conversation. Uh, you know, how we regulate it is still to be determined, but we're going to need to regulate it, right? I mean, because of that, it's just like, you know, we have regulations in place now that there can't be a liquor store 300 feet from a school. So we'll adapt some of those regulations that we already have in place, I would assume, and um, get a committee going and, and study it and look to see what other uh, cities and towns are doing. But there's people actually making, you know, careers out of it right now and having these companies that will, you know, the folks that are coming out to us and pitching us that they will write our regs. They will be the liaisons between the Googles um, and those ad campaign companies. And they would manage that, if you will, for a certain price. So there's all these new businesses popping up just from you know the new technology going forward. So it's interesting. I, I'm looking forward to seeing how that moves and how we work it out. And, and will it be, I'm assuming we're gonna do more of a you know, citywide regulatory um, attack than a, than a blanket, you know, state of Connecticut attack. So uh, I haven't really spoken to anyone at the state level on this yet. It's really just been something we've been talking about internally, but I'm, sur I'm sure that some of the other cities and towns have been talking about it. So I'm, I'm excited actually to see how it, how it works out and see what type of new businesses and technology come from it. And kind of in, along those same lines with, um, I know there's been a, it, we had uh, Lieutenant Governor Susan Beisowitz on and was talking about how so many new businesses are popping up uh, over the, during the pandemic. Have you heard from a lot of new, new business owners coming online? And if so, kind of what are some of the major questions you get? It's been really interesting. So through this pandemic, right, there's this horrible tragedy, of course. You know, so many of us have known and lost people and it's, um, devastating. And then you have that with this juxt juxtaposition of this pretty decent economic story. Um, our city of Milford, we have had more new business starts in 2020 than we did in all the year, the decade prior, which is incredible. I mean, who would have thought that would happen? I think what's happening is that um, specifically for this year, people either got laid off, uh, they moved, they uh, moved out of the city, like we were talking about before and had a little bit more time. And they're starting those businesses that they've always dreamed about and decided to just take a leap. And I've seen a lot of that this year. I've seen a lot of people just saying, you know what? I got laid off. I've always wanted to do be a baker and I'm really good at it. And I am going to, I'm going to kick it off this year. So I think it's been cool. It's, you know, from this de devastation, there's been a lot of dream making as well and a lot of supportive like lieutenant lieutenant governor by switz is you know a huge proponent of women business and she's been awesome um for for us and and how we move forward as a state and how to attract new business so yeah i've i've certainly seen that in milford and i've seen that in the state of connecticut and it's really from um new yorkers moving in and people just saying you know what this is it once in a lifetime chance and I'm going to jump on it. So it's pretty cool. That's awesome. And then, I mean, as we talk about kind of the small business creation on the other side of that, you have the larger companies that um, are, are probably looking from to go from having uh, all of their staff in one place to kind of some senior execs going elsewhere, which we've seen in states across the country, cities, and with, with uh, Milford being so fortunate to have Subway headquartered here, and BIC, and, and such a hub for, for business. I know there's been talk a few senior executives going uh, from Subway to, to Miami where the CEO is resides. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little yeah. bit about what you're seeing in trends on that? There was no surprise when um, John Chidsey came in as CEO of Subway and being stationed in Miami that there would be uh, some operations relocated closer to him. It makes sense. I mean, every, you know, when Amazon did the, the RFP across the country and one of the ways everyone was trying to figure out where they were going to go is where the CEO's house was. So that's a long known thing, you know, wherever the CEO is, that's kind of where uh, business will, will be. So 
I wasn't surprised. I think uh, less than 10% is is what um, how many folks will be moving down to Florida. I have been assured by the senior executives in the subway that we are certainly, they're certainly committed to Milford. They'll be here for a very long time. They have a beautiful campus. They're very uh, much a part of the fabric of our community. They give back to the United Way in such generous ways that uh, we have a long-standing, wonderful relationship with Subway, and I think they'll be here for many, many years. And it, yeah, it just made sense to me that there was some operations getting closer to uh, their CEO. And Julie, on the on the state level, I know you you um, are on the convention center. I'm going to slaughter the name here, but it's the convention center and sports task force. Um, yep, what, Connecticut what, Conven Con Connecticut Convention and Sports Bureau. Yeah. <laughs> <Mouthful. laughs> you talk about so. Me? Oh, yeah, yeah go for it. No, that's okay. It's uh, I'm, I'm new on the organization. It's really interesting, but it's a great. Uh, I've, we started focusing on tourism in the city of Milford. Uh, probably in 2017, we kicked off Discover Milford. So I, I really fell in love with with what tourism is and what it means for economic development and and having. Um, you know, folks visiting and, and, and making those businesses viable. So when I moved on to that board, it just really opened my eyes to an entire, another industry and um, part of tourism, the sports. And so what that, what they do, the con convention is recruit conventions and sports events and all that, those type of things, like the little leagues that have those big, huge events all over. Yeah, you know, that's what they do. They say, Hey, come on to Connecticut or, um, you know, big conventions for any organizations. They say, oh, you know, we pitch Connecticut, um, TV shows, all that kind of stuff. So it's pretty interesting. Uh, I came on, of course, in a year during the pandemic where nobody, you know, was going anywhere. So a lot of the conversation was about, um, you know, what's going to happen next year. But also interestingly enough, these events are so big that they're working on that they're two or three years out anyway. So what the problem really is, is they still have those two or three year events, but those are starting to cancel and people aren't sure about what those, the next two or three years. It's just so unstable right now that it's hard to uh, pitch any state to have a convention because all these conventions and conferences and all these types of things are going online. So it's going to be, uh, an interesting couple of years to try and figure out how we survive in that sense. You know, they also do a lot of um, fam tours, um, which, you know, people come from Ireland or, you know, whatever country to come. And, you know, they came to Milford a couple of years ago and there was like 10 people people and we set them up for, you know, dinner downtown and we just showed them all the best things of Milford. So when they back, went back to Ireland, because we have the Bradley connection, they say, Hey, you guys, when you go to Connecticut, pop by Milford, they have all these great things. So none of that is happening right now. So a lot of those things are falling off the wayside and we just need to open the country, get those vaccines out, get everyone safe and healthy. And then we can really focus on, making those connections again and, and getting those conventions to Connecticut and the sports events and all that kind of stuff. It'll happen again. It's just, you know, it's going to be a couple of years. I really, I really do think that's true. And kind of along similar lines, as you look to plan for, for summer and you have so many amazing events in Milford, um, how, how is your planning process for, for this coming summer with so much uh, up in the air still? We are planning just like we did last summer. So obviously the governor relaxed um, a lot of the rules for outdoor events uh, starting March 19th. Um, you can have quite a few more, I think it's 10,000 in open stadiums and stuff. So um, we'll be able to plan some events, but for instance, the Oyster Festival is 50,000. That's well over the 10,000. So we're gonna have to, um, you know, and the, actually is the Oyster Festival is a private organization. That's actually not a city run organization at all. So I don't wanna speak for them, but you know, they'll have to look at things like selling tickets or things like that to keep, you know, make sure that we keep the people down or just not have events. Um, with the health department, when people are coming in for events right now, the advice is to up until March 19th, you know, write the event just like it is today wait to the March 19th and, you know, do the event for that day 
or if the event is uh, in July, wait until we know what the new um, rules will be, the new sector rules, so people can do their event according to those sector rules. So it's just really hard still to to plan events and, and with the unknown. I don't think there's going to be a ton this summer. I think there'll be more small events, but I don't think they're going to be the big ones like we're we're accustomed to, unfortunately. Well, I'm very much looking forward to hanging out at Oyster Fest 2022. Me too. <laughs> it's always my great. birthday weekend, so I always call it the the city of Milford's party for me. <laughs> uh, that's perfect. <laughs> Julie Nash Fest. I'm all about it. Yes. <laughs> Sounds yes. great. Well, Julie, I can't thank you enough for your time. This has been great. Anything else you want to mention before? Uh... No, I want to thank you, Brett, for having me. I want to, Brett's a, a resident of Milford, so um, he's given a lot of time to uh, some efforts here in the city. And I thank you for what you've done for the city of Milford. And I look forward to working with you more. Uh, well, that's mutual, Julie. And thank you so much. I appreciate it. And uh, thank you, everybody, for listening to another episode of Win the Future. And we will be back next week. Thank you for listening to the Win the Future podcast sponsored by the strategic communications firm, A Better Campaign. Make sure to visit our website at abettercampaign.com backslash win the future. Please don't forget to subscribe to our podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts and share it with your friends. Thank you for tuning in. Please tune in again next Thursday for another episode of Win the Future.